Welcome to the teaching ministry of David T. Demola. Open your heart to receive as Pastor Demola teaches the uncompromised Word of God. Amen. Now, let me begin today by talking about this, that sometime about two generations ago, a generation and a half ago, a book was written by a man named J.B. Phillips called Your God is Too Small. And actually, the title says it all. So many of us struggle because our God is much smaller than the God of the Bible. And we have neatly defined him and kept him in a box of our own making. If your God is too small, perhaps you need to take another look at the God of the Bible. Over centuries, theologians have used certain words to describe his essence. Sovereign, almighty, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, infinite, eternal, immortal, just to mention a few of those names. But no list of adjectives could ever truly and adequately picture the immenseness of the God that we serve. He is more powerful than we know. He is more understanding than we could imagine. He has more wisdom than the wisest men and women of all the earth. His love is beyond human comprehension. His grace has no limits. His holiness is infinite. And his ways, according to the word of God, are past understanding. He is the one true God that has no beginning and no ending. He created all things, and all things are upheld by the word of his power. <laughs> he has no peers. No one can give him advice. No one can fully understand him because he is perfect in all of his ways. And every best effort that we make to describe him will ultimately fall short of his divine reality. And we can flatter ourselves to think that we truly understand him, but the fact is, we're only scratching the surface. I remember being taught as a little boy the prayer that we prayed at the dinner table. God is great, God is good, and we thank you for our food, amen. Does anybody remember that? Or is that lost in these generations? How many honestly can remember that little prayer? Do you know that that was one of the most powerful prayers that you could pray? Because there are two essences of God in there that are powerful. God is great and God is good. And if you could only finger in on those two essences of God, it would change your whole idea of how God wants to treat you. So say it out loud with me. Say, God is great. God is, great. God is, good. God is good. And we thank you for our pastor. <laughs> so today, I came with a word from God. Because I realized that some of us have experienced deep struggles. Just this past week, we had four, three funerals. Some of them were devastating. And I, I learned uh, just about 48 hours ago that Barry Vasquez, who's one of our teachers, suffered a mild heart attack. One of our teachers here. While teaching, yes, while teaching on Thursday, it happened. And so I know that whether we'd like to admit it or not, whether how, how much faith we have and confidence in God, that struggles are a part of life. So tap your neighbor and say, I know that you've had some struggles in your life. I, I kind of don't like the way you said that because you, you didn't want to admit it. Somebody said, I'll never admit that by faith. Oh, cut it out. Your faith isn't so that you can put trophies in a case. It's so that you can defeat the devil. And in our deepest struggles, it helps to remind ourselves 
that God has always been faithful. Can I get anybody witnessing today that God has been faithful to you? I can witness that he has never failed me yet, and he never will, and that God is faithful to his word. In fact, he said it himself, I watch over my word to perform it. So I testify today for the, of the goodness of my God. He has never come late. He always comes on time. Sometimes not when I expect him, but he never comes short of that thing that I need. Tap your neighbor today and say, has he been good to you? Yeah, so I, like has been happening so much recently, I get my best messages at 3 o'clock in the morning, something about 3 o'clock. And this is what the Lord said to me. Today, I'm going to download something into the spirits of my kids. And so I asked the art department to create something for me. And it's, I'm going to give you my app today. This is my new Faith Fellowship app. If you know, you go on your phone, your iPhone or whatever phone you have, you'll see that there's an app, and then you, you have to push the thing to get it, and then it installs it. Now, it's, this is not a real app, but if be, so many people ask after the first service, is that a real app? Then I just told them a few minutes ago, create a real app. So we're going to have a Faith Fellowship app someday soon here, and the title of it is, He'll Do It Again. I want you to tell three people around you right now, He'll do it again. So I want you to put your index finger up like you're touching where it says get. Come on, everybody, point your finger. And I want you to push it today, right now. Everybody, push it. Come on. Say, I got it. Say, I got it. And it will be installed over the next few minutes as I declare this word to you. Proverbs 4.18 says in the New International Version, the path of the righteous is like a morning sun. It shines ever brighter till the full light of day. I'm glad when I see the morning light. I'm glad when the sun is just coming up. Our house faces east in the front and west in the back. So we have the, both, the best of both suns, the rising and the setting. And when that sun rises up, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter until the full sunlight just fills the entire living room and dining room of our house. I believe that God is getting ready to shine an awesome light into your life. How wonderful it is to wake up in the morning, to have God wake you up, to wake up and, and to know your bills are paid, to know that your health is strong, to know that your family is strong to know that your kids are serving God, to know that God has everything under control. But isn't it amazing of how the enemy will always cause you to focus on the junk? You could have 99 things go right for you. And one ugly thing happened to you, and that's what the enemy focuses on. You're annoyed, you're upset, you're discouraged, you're despondent, you, you look like you've lost your last friend because he wants you to focus on the darker moments of life. Let's not make any mistake about it, we've all had tough days. Can anybody witness today to me that you've had some tough days in your life? I, I, I promise you if the person as nice as they look today and as good as they smell sitting next to you that didn't raise their hand. You better raise it for them real quick because the spirit of lying may jump on them. How many have gone through some tough days in your life? We're going to find something out today in a few minutes about that. Ugly situations. Times when we'll be at a place where it seems like we're trapped and there's no way out. 
But the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatian church in chapter 6 and verse 9 of the book of Galatians, and he said, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in, in due season, ah, uh, somebody say due season. due season. Say it like you mean it, say due season. Due season. We shall reap if we, if we what, if we what? So I want you to tell somebody next to you, don't faint now because your season is about to come. The message says, don't give up or quit. I'm absolutely sure that none of us has ever been exempt from some of life's trying moments. The fact is that when things happen, we have a tendency to forget that God met us in our last disaster. That when we had nobody to turn to and we turned to him, he delivered us out of our problem. The psalmist said he brought me up also out of the horrible pit. How many have been brought up out of the pit? How many could say, if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be alive today? If it wasn't for his love and his mercy and his grace and his kindness, his sovereign love and providence in my life, I wouldn't even be here today. But thank God for his grace. I want you to tell three people around you, he'll do it again. Tell him like I mean it. Say here, he'll do it again. I know that there are some folks that don't acknowledge all the old hymns. And I grew up in a church where all we had was a hymnal. And many of those hymns were, as Brother Hagin used to say, embalmed with unbelief. Ah, but I got this hymn that came to me the other day that I want to share with you tonight. And it's the, an old hymn called God Leads Us Along. The songwriter wrote this, In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the water's cool flow bathes the weary one's feet, God leads his dear children along. Listen to the chorus. Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Oh, come on, somebody say amen. amen. Though sorrows befall us and evils oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer, defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children along, some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood, some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. I can tell you today that God has been faithful to me. Ah, uh, you didn't help me at all there. God has been faithful to me. I don't care about what you think today, but God has been faithful to me. And I came to witness for him today that no matter what I've been through, no matter where I've been, no matter how down I have felt, he has always been there to bring me up. And he even gives you a song in the middle of your distress. In fact, I find when I'm hurting the most, I've got to hear some worship. I've got to get tuned in to heaven's chorus. I've got to feed my spirit with something that will, will turn away the blues. Come on, somebody help me today. And so while that song may be old and people don't sing it anymore, it has an astounding message to it that God will always give you a song no matter what you're going through. And I came to tell somebody prophetically today that you are about to come out of that dark place and God is about to do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again. I know for a fact that this is a season for turnaround in many lives. And everything that the enemy has stolen from you is coming back. We used to sing it, Deborah. Remember, I'm going up to the enemy's camp and I'm going to take back everything he stole from me. Come on, somebody. 
I want you to be aggressive today, and I don't want you to be moaning and belly aching, and, and I don't want you to be despondent. I want you to be aggressive and say, I'm taking back everything that the enemy has stolen from me. I want you to tell somebody right now next to you, I'm taking back time. I'm taking back health. I'm taking back money. I'm taking back my reputation. I'm taking it back. I want you to turn to Numbers chapter 11. I want you to look at the story of Moses. He is absolutely disgusted with God's people. Look at the first verse of chapter 11. Just the first verse tells the story of the whole chapter. The people complained. It displeased the Lord, and he heard it, and his anger was kindled. Have you ever found yourself Complaining more than praising God? Shall I go over to the other side and get their help, or are you going to help me over here? Have you ever found yourself complaining more than praising God? He's met every bill that you've had, but you've got one outstanding bill, and you've made that the thing that really drives you crazy. Personally, I can't stand to be around complainers and belly aches. I'm going to be strong enough, and I'm even going to say I actually hate it. I hate to be around negative people who are always fussing about everything. Nothing's ever right for them. The music's too loud or the music's too soft. The air conditioning is blowing too hard or it's too hot. There's always something to complain about. The microphone was too loud. The preacher, didn't, I didn't like his tie. I don't like the paint on the wall. I wish they'd change the people in the parking lot. And on and on and on. You complain about everything. You even complain about you. Come on, <laughs> Murmur, bellyache, complain. And I want to tell you something, and whether you like to believe it or not, it is a demonic spirit that has been loosed on the church of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you to complain about things and to murmur and backbite. I want to tell you God knows what you're talking about behind closed doors. 